In this video, I'm going to run through the solutions to the different problems included on the AP Calculus review video for Chapter 2. All of these problems are limits problems, and the first limits problem I'm going to be looking at today is one involving finding the limit as x approaches 0 of 5x over x. This should be a very straightforward problem. The big thing you're dealing with here is if you substitute at this point, x is going to be 0, you're going to get a 0 in the denominator. However, keep in mind, you can always factor out a greatest common factor, and in this case, if you do that, you have the limit as x approaches 0, 5x over x, you can divide out the greatest common factor of x, you get the limit as x approaches 0, just to 5, and hopefully you know that the limit of a constant is just going to be equal to that constant. So solution to my first limit problem is 5. For my second limit problem, I want the limit as x approaches 1 of x squared plus 5x plus 6 over the quantity x plus 1. Now, you have a tendency to look at this and think, oh, I need to factor, I need to cancel something. But if you notice, that only needs to happen if you've got something that's written in the form 0 over 0 after you substitute, if you've got that indeterminate form, or if you've got just a 0 in the denominator in general. And you're going to notice here, you substitute a 1 into the denominator, you're not going to get a denominator of 0. So in this case, I can find the limit as x approaches 1 merely by substituting 1 into this expression. So I'm going to have 1 squared plus 5 times 1 plus 6 all over 1 plus 1. And when I work this out, let's see, that's going to be 1 plus 5 is 6, plus 6 is 12. Denominator is going to be 2, and the limit ends up working out to be 6. So again, keep in mind, you do have that substitution option, and in many cases, that's going to be all you need to do. Moving on to example 2. It's the limit as x approaches negative 3 of the quantity x plus 1 over x squared plus 6x plus 9. Um, if you square negative 3, you get 9. 9 and 9 adds up to 18, and that'll counteract the negative 18 you're getting when you substitute negative 3 in, in for the denominator. So this is a case in which you're going to have to try to cancel something. Uh, the issue that you're going to run into in this case, however, is that when you do your factorization and try to cancel something in the denominator, this is a perfect square trinomial. You're going to have the limit as x approaches negative 3 of the quantity x plus 1. The denominator is going to factor as the quantity x plus 3 times the quantity x plus 3. Uh, you'll notice there's not going to be a cancellation here. Um, actually, what's going to happen, there's going to be an asymptote of some kind when x is equal to negative 3, since those don't cancel. Um, as a result, because those don't cancel, this is not going to have any kind of limit in the traditional numerical sense. Now, you could look at the graph, and you could find out if the graph is going to infinity from the right-hand side or the left-hand side, or if you go to negative infinity. Uh, but just in general, Having two values that go either up or down infinitely, um, you're still not going to have a limit um, because they're not going to be approaching the exact same value from both sides. So um, again, you can look at that different ways, but uh, in the sense that we're going to look at this here, that's considered to be no limit. All right. Uh, moving on to the next set of examples. More limit problems. Here I have the limit as x approaches 2 of x cubed minus 2x squared plus 5x minus 10. You notice if you substitute a 2 into the denominator, you get 0. This is going to be a case in which I'm going to want to use synthetic division to try to cancel this out, because most of you probably can't factor a cubic off the top of your head. So synthetic division, I'm going to put a positive 2, not a negative 2. You've got to change the sign there inside parentheses. I'm going to list each of my coefficients. Keep in mind, if you're missing a variable, you need to make sure that you list. If you're missing a variable, you need to make sure that you list a zero as a placeholder. Otherwise, your synthetic division is going to be off. I don't need to do that in this case, though. So 2 times 1 is 2. You add, you get 0. 
2 times 0 is 0, I get 5. 2 times 5 is 10, I get 0. That's my remainder, constant, my x, and my x squared. So as a result, I'm left with x squared plus 5. Once I've divided out that denominator, I want the limit as x approaches 2. So at this point, I can merely substitute 2 squared plus 5 is equal to 9. And that's my limit. All right? Moving along. Uh, this one, at the time I have a piecewise function, um, the problem here is the limit as x approaches 4. And I have the function being equal to 2x minus 5 when x is not equal to 4. And it's equal to 6 when x is equal to 4. Um, you have to be careful here when you work with this. Remember that the limit has nothing to do with the functional value. And a lot of times people have a tendency to look at this and say, oh, the function is equal to 4 right here. Uh, oh, well, well, okay. Um, the function is equal to 6 when x is equal to 4. That's the value I want to look at. No, that's not the limit. You can have a function that's discontinuous that has a point up here somewhere at 6, and it actually has a limit that's approaching some other number. So the thing that's tricky for people to remember is you don't look at that one singular value. You look at what it's coming into from the left side. You look at what it's coming into from the right side. And that's what's happening. So the important thing to recognize in this case is for all values where x is not equal to 4, you're using this function right here. So when I'm coming in from the left-hand side, as I get closer and closer and closer, I'm using this equation. Uh, when I come in from the right-hand side, as I get closer and closer and closer, I'm using this equation as well. So you actually substitute into this equation to see, is the limit actually approaching, the, what is the limit actually approaching as I get closer and closer to 4, not what is my functional value at 4. So, um, at 4, 2 times 4, Minus 5 is equal to 3. And it turns out that 3 is the limit this is approaching. And we see that the functional value at 4 is actually 6. So what's happening here is we have a graph of some kind that's coming in. Uh, and at 3, a y value of 3, there's a gap. Up at 6, we've got a point up here. Um, but the point is, from both sides, from the right and the left, it's getting close to 3 everywhere other than that one point. Okay, so as long as it's approaching that value, you still consider that to be the limit. So don't be thrown off um, when you've got those barrier values. You've got to check and see that the numbers are approaching that value. Moving along. Next example here. What the limit is h approaches 0 of 2 times the quantity x plus h minus 5 minus 2x minus 5 all over h. Again, there are a lot of values here. We've got a lot of like terms. We've got some parentheses. First thing I need to do here is simplify. Okay, that's going to be very, very important. So um, I'm going to multiply out my parentheses here. That's going to be 2x plus 2h minus 5 minus 2x. Be careful here. This negative gets applied to both of those values. So that's going to be a plus 5. And uh, we want the limit as h approaches 0. And fantastic things are going to happen because you're going to see a bunch of cancellations. I have a 2x and a negative 2x. Those cancel. I have a 5 and I have a negative 5. Those cancel. And I'm just left with the limit as h approaches 0 of 2h over h, which looks a lot like what I saw earlier. I've got a greatest common factor of h that I can cancel. And of course, the limit of the constant 2 as x approaches anything is just going to work out to be 2. So again, it looks horrible. Not really all that bad, though, in the grand scheme of things. And, and we're actually going to see this very important as one of our definitions of derivative as we continue to move toward that idea. Um, the second limit, the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 2x over x. Uh, you always try substituting first. And what you're going to find in this case is that you get 0 over 0 when you substitute into this function. Um, 
And so unfortunately, I can't factor out an X here, I can't do anything like that. All I can do is go to a calculator and get an approximation of what that limit's going to be. Um, so I'm going to put the sine of X over X into my graphing calculator. I need to make sure I'm in radian mode. And let's see, I have sine of X divided by X. And I'm going to run my table. I want values as X approaches zero. So uh, I'm going to put in numbers close to zero. Maybe I'll try something like 0 0.001 and see what the value is on my table. But the value is very, very close to that. So 0 0.001. And as I get very close on my graph, uh, and you can actually look at the graph on your calculator too, it looks something kind of like this. It actually comes up and goes through like that. It appears to be going through one on the actual graph, although you can't see that on the video. Uh, and when I go to my table, we can see the same kind of thing. Uh, as I get very, very close to zero, the function is approaching one. And there might be cases where you're going to have to approximate and either using a table of values or using a graph is the only thing you can do. And it's never a terrible thing, even if you think you know how to solve something by hand, to go back and take a look at the graph, because um, sometimes you'll find a solution there as well. Okay.